Our scripture this morning is taken from Luke chapter 6, verses 27 through 38. This is love for enemies. But I tell you who hear me, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. If someone strikes you on one cheek, turn to him and the other also. If someone takes your cloak, do not stop him from taking your tunic. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners, expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful just as your father is merciful. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgiven you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your lap. For within the me with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Here ends the reading of the Holy Word. So last night uh, in our household was kind of a rough evening. Um, Brenna, who does sleep in our bed sometimes, uh, had a, a night where she just continued to yell and scream throughout the night. Sometimes kids are like that, right? Uh, and then on top of that, I had my own nightmare um, just to make it even better. And so I uh, woke up feeling kind of tired this morning, but I do believe that when something like that happens prior to coming to church on Sunday, um, to me, it signals that somebody needs to hear the message today. Um, whether it's someone here or at Klein's Grove or watching online, there must be something that's important today that someone is trying to stop me from, from saying. So if you need to hear it today, hopefully you, you get to hear it. So in our scripture for today, we find Jesus once again speaking to the people. And this is a continuation of the Sermon on the Mount. And if you've been here the last few weeks, you know that we've kind of been studying that. Uh, but this account, however, comes from the book of Luke. In the last few weeks, we've been looking at it from the book of Matthew. And in this passage, we find what I consider to be some of the tenets of the Christian faith. And what I mean by that, these are things that as Christians, we should all be able to point to and say, yes, that is what it means to be a Christian. Now, we're told in 2 Timothy verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 16, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Well, this particular passage is that, and then some. See, in this passage today, we find what I would call some of the greatest hits of the ministry of Jesus. And I know that sounds like a strange way to look at scripture, but think about it. You know how there are music groups that are seemingly popular across generations? For example, like the Beatles. Now, everyone probably knows the song, I Want to Hold Your Hand, or uh, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Cub Band. Those are probably ones that you've heard, even if you're not a fan of the Beatles. But you probably don't know the song Rocky Raccoon, unless you are a fan of the Beatles. So if you happen to be a big fan of something, then you obviously know more about it than someone who just has a passing fancy in it. But this passage, at least parts of the scripture, are things that have crossed over into the world. They are things that are known by just about everyone, not just those that are Christians. Things like turn the other cheek, or don't judge unless you want to be judged, are ideas that everyone has probably heard of. In fact, people say these things, but they might not even know that they are the words of Jesus. 
Now we find ourselves in the same situation as those Beatles fans that know all the songs. See, we know that these are the words that Jesus spoke. But there are problems that arise for us when we study well-known portions of Scripture. One problem that we have to make ourselves aware of as people, especially as followers of Christ, when we come across a popular piece of Scripture, is we cannot allow ourselves to forget that what Christ had to say was important. We can't allow ourselves to think, oh yeah, I know that one. I've been hearing it since I was a child. I don't need to study that anymore. You see, it can lose meaning for us whenever we hear it time and time again. Another problem that we come across with popular scripture is that we have to make sure that we are reading it inside its context and not applying the things that the outside world has attached to it. And finally, we run into the issue of discussing popular scripture with those who have just found out about it. Choosing to talk to them as if we know all and they know nothing. So today I want to talk about these things and why it's important to approach our study of the scriptures in the correct way. Now our first issue that can arise is, is not studying our scripture the proper way, is to simply to allow it to lose meaning to us. I've read it a thousand times. The, I've heard 17 different pastors that have come through the church give a sermon on it, and every single sermon kind of runs together, and it's really lost the meaning that it has. But when we take that approach, we are not doing that scripture any justice. You see, we have to approach scripture each and every time with an open mind and an open heart. We have to be willing to say, Lord, I am here. I am open to what you have to say to me today. Teach me through your scripture. Teach me through those that are trying to help lead me. And let me gain the knowledge that you want to impart to me. And if we don't take that attitude each and every time when we're studying or we're listening, we could be missing what God is trying to say to us. You see, scripture does change over time for us. One saying that I am very fond of is this, you don't read the Bible, the Bible reads you. Meaning that when you are studying the scriptures, depending on what is going on in your life at the time, that same scripture that you've read a million times can mean a million different things to you when you read it. But that is only possible if you approach the scriptures with the proper respect and attitude that you need, if you allow yourself to not just to default to reading through the words. See, it becomes much harder to get the needed lessons when you do that. The second issue that arises when we study well-known portions of Scripture is we run into the issue of needing to remove or to block out what the world has said about these Scriptures. When I read this passage and I think about how the world would look at these things, I come up with something that sounds very different than what I believe Jesus is trying to tell us. See, this is what the world would say when they read, read these scriptures. Love your enemies. How can you love your enemies? What a stupid idea. Of course you need to hate your enemies. They're your enemies. Turn the other cheek when you are struck. What do you mean, turn the other cheek? If you strike me, you better turn both your cheeks and run the other way, because I'm coming for you. Or turn the other cheek is what a coward says because they're too afraid to fight. Give to those that beg from you. Oh yeah, I'll give them something. I'll give them my opinion that they should go get a job. Besides, if I just give them money, what are they going to do with it? They're just going to go buy drugs or they're going to go buy booze. If I lend you some money, you better believe I'm getting it back with interest. I'm not some kind of sucker here to just give away things. What do you mean I shouldn't judge others? Have you seen how they behave? I can't help but judge them. Oh, I'm not worried about that second part either. Go ahead and judge me. I'm so great, how could I ever have to worry about it? Well, what do you mean I'm wrong? How dare you tell me I'm wrong? How dare you judge me? See, this is what the majority of the world sounds like when they hear this passage. That is their response to these things. But even more dangerous than that is for us as Christians to take these passages and the way that they can sound when we only live them out partially. 
when we only live them out partially, this is what it sounds like as a Christian. Love your enemies unless they cross this line and then hate them. Turn the other cheek unless that person deserves a good beating. Give to those to beg, but only if they really seem to need it or only if they come right to the shelter or right up to the church for help. Judge not unless that person is doing something that I believe is wrong according to how I have decided to interpret Scripture today. Then I will judge them from my seat of superiority and I will call it Christian love instead of judgment. You see, it is not just the world that can make popular Scripture tainted with their thoughts. It is us as well. So we have to make sure we are not doing that. Finally, we must make sure that we are helping those that are new in the faith to learn about the meaning of Scripture in ways that they can understand and apply to their own lives. Too often we make the mistake of trying to impose our own thoughts on Scripture and not allowing people to find their own ideas. You see, we are here to help them learn and to understand, not just tell them what we think is the only thought. Think of it this way. Now, I really like Star Wars. And I know that that is a very nerdy thing to like. I'm fully aware of that, and I'm okay with it. I've watched all the movies multiple times. I've watched all the new series that are out. I know a lot about the back lore of the franchise, but if I were to go and try to talk to people that are the true Star Wars uber fans, the, the real ones that you would think of as the Star Wars nerds, they would tell me how dumb I am. <laughs> they, would, they would say, you don't know anything about anything. And if you can't tell me why the Twi'leks, some of them are green and some of them are orange, then you don't know anything about anything. And I know it sounds funny, but we do that to people that are new in the faith as well. I think we do it by accident a lot, but we still do it. We think we are showing them what they should be learning or thinking about Scripture, but if we're not careful, we can come off as simply trying to show them how smart we are. Even worse, we can come across to them as saying, you could never hope to understand the Scripture like I do, because you will never be as good as me. So we must make sure that when we are teaching them, especially these scriptures that are well known, we are allowing them to form their own thoughts, to guide them, but in a gentle way, just as Jesus guided us all in a gentle way. So my challenges for you this week are to think about these things. Are you looking at scripture with an open heart and open mind? Are you asking God what you should be learning? Are you teaching others gently? And are you living out the scriptures in the way that Christ is telling you to do? Or are you just letting the world stop you from doing so? Amen.